Hello and welcome back to our YouTube channel. In today's video, we'll be talking about AT-4. The AT-4 anti-tank missile launcher was sent to Ukraine by Sweden to bid farewell to Russian tanks. Some of you might have little to no idea about the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine, so for you people, we'll be covering that too in today's video. So without further ado, let's get started. In a momentous development, Swedish missiles have arrived in war-torn Ukraine, despite the ongoing tensions between the Kremlin and Kiev. During the ongoing Russian invasion, images of Ukrainian soldiers with a Swedish AT-4 anti-tank missile launcher have surfaced. There will be a total of 5,000 AT-4 missiles delivered. It's worth noting that on February 28th, Sweden chose to deliver military equipment to Ukraine, breaking its policy of not sending armaments to countries in an active conflict. Swedish Prime Minister Magdalena Andersson declared that her government would send 500 Bofors, AT-4 anti-tank weaponry, 135,000 field rations, 5,000 body armor, and 5,000 helmets to Afghanistan. The AT-4 is an unguided, single-shot, recoilless, smooth-bore anti-tank weapon developed by Saab Bau Force Dynamics in Sweden. The AT-4 has been a huge success for Saab, and it is now one of the most widely used light anti-tank weapons in the world. The AT-4 is designed to provide infantry units with the means of destroying or disabling armored vehicles and fortifications, albeit it is ineffectual against today's main battle tanks. The launcher and projectile are pre-packaged and issued as a single quantity of ammunition, with the launcher being discarded after each use. The AT-4 has a length of 101.6 centimeters, a weight of 6.7 kilograms, a bore diameter of 84 millimeters, and a maximum effective range of 300 meters, though it has been employed for area fires as far as 500 meters. It can pierce 420 millimeters of rolled, homogeneous armor and travel 250 meters in less than a second. It has a muzzle velocity of 290 meters per second, an operating temperature of negative 40 to 60 degrees Celsius, and fin-stabilized projectiles with high explosive anti-tank warheads as ammunition. There are a variety of projectiles available for the AT-4. Projectiles are pre-loaded into the launcher tubes because the AT-4 is a one-shot weapon. HEAT stands for High Explosive Anti-Tank Weapon. With its Beyond Armor impact, the HEAT projectile can penetrate up to 420 mm of RHA. It includes HEDP-502 rounds, which are high explosive dual-purpose rounds that may be used against bunkers, structures, and enemy soldiers in the open, as well as light armor. The projectile can be programmed to detonate immediately or with a small delay. The HEDP projectile's thicker nose cap lets it pass through light walls or windows before exploding, skipping off the ground for an airburst. A smaller cone heat warhead with 150 mm of penetration into rolled homogeneous armor is available for use against light armor. The HP or high penetration round can penetrate up to 600 mm of rolled homogeneous armor. The anti-structure tandem warhead, AST, was created for urban combat situations where a projectile heavier than the HEDP AT-4 is required. This projectile includes a thermal warhead with a shallow cone for low penetration, but a wide hole, as well as a follow-through high-blast warhead with two settings, one for destroying bunkers and the other for mice gripping a building wall. It has a longer range for combat entry, with anti-armor versions of the heat warhead extending the range from 300 to 600 meters. It has high-explosive anti-personnel rounds that may be set for impact or airburst detonation with an effective range of up to a thousand meters, and it can be considered a disposable, low-cost alternative to Carl Gustav for recoilless rifles when it comes to its functioning. The Carl Gustav, which operates on the principle of a recoilless weapon, where the forward inertia of the projectile is compensated by the inertia of propellant gases ejecting from the rear of the barrel, has influenced the design of the AT-4. The recoilless design has the disadvantage of creating a wide backblast area behind the weapon, which can cause severe burns and overpressure injuries to friendly personnel in the region of the user, as well as by the user themselves, especially in confined areas. The enemy may be able to see where the user is by using the backblast. The AT-4CS confined space version, which was specifically built for urban warfare, solved the problem of backblast. The back explosion is absorbed by a saltwater countermass in the launcher's rear. The ensuing spray captures and dramatically slows down the pressure wave, allowing troops to fire from enclosed spaces. Even before the AT-4 was deployed by Sweden, 
It was entered into a U.S. Army competition for a new anti-tank weapon, which Congress authorized in 1982, when the FGR-17 Viper failed to replace the M-72 law. The FFV AT-4 came the closest to achieving all of the primary requirements specified to replace the M-72 law, according to the U.S. Army's report to Congress in November 1983, with the armbrust coming in second. Now let's talk about the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine. The Russo-Ukrainian war is an ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine, involving pro-Russian rebel troops. It began in February 2014 after the Ukrainian Revolution of Dignity, and initially centered on the international recognition of Crimea and parts of the Donbass as part of Ukraine. The Russian annexation of Crimea and the war in Donbass between Ukraine and Russia-backed separatists, as well as naval incidents, cyber warfare and political tensions, marked the first eight years of the conflict. There was a substantial Russian military buildup around Ukraine's borders in 2021. In early 2022, NATO accused Russia of plotting an invasion, which the Russian government rejected. Russian President Vladimir Putin described NATO's expansion as a threat to his country and urged that Ukraine be prohibited from joining the military alliance. He also advocated Russian irredentist views, questioned Ukraine's right to exist, and claimed that Soviet Russia had unlawfully established Ukraine. Russia recognized the two self-proclaimed separatist governments in the Donbass on February 21, 2022, and openly sent soldiers into the region. Russia attacked Ukraine three days later. Russia has been widely denounced for its actions in the post-revolutionary Ukraine, with many accusing it of breaking international law and infringing on Ukrainian sovereignty. Following the 2022 invasion, many countries imposed economic sanctions on Russia, Russian people, and Russian companies. Thousands of people have died as a result of the war, which has had a terrible humanitarian impact. It has also driven more than 2 million people to flee Ukraine in less than two weeks, resulting in the world's fastest-growing refugee crisis since World War II. According to the United Nations, on March 9th, a Russian strike on a maternity facility in the besieged southern port city of Mariupol killed at least three persons and injured 17. People have started boiling snow for water, cutting trees for heat, and constructing ditches to accommodate the city's growing number of corpses because there is no electricity or water. Several rounds of diplomacy between Russia and Ukraine have failed to bring the war to an end. President Biden stated in early December that his administration would not consider sending soldiers to fight for Ukraine because, among other things, Ukraine is not a member of NATO and does not fall under its collective defense obligation. Instead, the U.S. has deployed anti-tank and anti-aircraft weapons to Ukraine, strengthened its military posture in NATO countries bordering Russia, and dispatched 7,000 extra troops to Europe to reassure NATO partners in Eastern Europe. The Pentagon has approved the deployment of an armored brigade combat team to Germany. Officials from the Obama administration have warned that the U.S. may back a Ukrainian rebellion. Effects of the Ukrainian War on the World Sanctions against Russia are aimed at isolating the country and causing a deep recession there. But the economic consequences will be felt by people all across the world. The dramatic spike in the price of commodities such as oil and metals, as well as wheat, is predicted to rise at the cost of many basic necessities such as food gasoline and heating. People in the United Kingdom and Europe are already paying exorbitant energy and fuel rates. The Russia-Ukraine crisis has pushed these even higher, with oil prices reaching their highest level in over 14 years, and wholesale gas prices more than doubling. Meanwhile, average UK petrol prices have hit record highs, with the latest price at £155 and diesel at £161. Russia is the world's second largest crude oil exporter and the world's largest supplier of natural gas, which is essential for heating homes, powering airlines, and filling cars with fuel. What are your thoughts on the AT4's destructive potential? What are your opinions about the Russia-Ukraine conflict? Please let us know in the comments box below and don't forget to subscribe and switch on notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.